Today on Houston Life, how the Neuroscience Institute at Memorial Hermann is helping patients with stroke prevention. Learn more about the warning signs you should be looking for. Plus, we're catching up with the third ward novelist and former teacher who became a New York Times bestselling author. Then meet the local young boy who was looking to complete his goal of being sworn in 100 times his inspiring story on reaching for his dreams. And accordionists from all parts of the U.S. are headed to Kima. Lauren Kelly will be trying her hand at this intriguing instrument. All that happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life on this Thursday, January 13th, 2022. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. Happy Friday Eve as we're getting closer to the weekend. I love your optimism. Friday Eve. It feels good. It does. And it's also Marathon Weekend, too. So big day for a lot of people. A lot of my friends are running the full and the half on Sunday, so I'm super excited for are that. Are they doing the carb loading scenario, your friends? Do you know? Yeah, sure. Yeah, because I used to train when I did long-distance yeah. cycling, and we'd be on the road for like a week at a time. you got to have the fuel to burn. Those pasta dinners, eat them up. Well, listen, new year, new hairstyle, right? New you? So, uh, no, the same you, right? Okay. Maybe just a different version, more enhanced version of ourselves. So have y'all heard of the new hairstyle in 2022? You have. I have. It's called the Bixie. The Bixie. Last fall, the octopus, uh, a lot of people were talking about the octopus haircut. Um, the Bixie, so this is sort of a combo between a bob and a pixie. We think of a pixie cut as being perhaps a bit shorter, right. having some spikes on the top. So uh, what do you think? Listen, I am a fan of this look, and I have to tell you, I mean, when I first met Orlando and we first started dating. He had that haircut? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. I had the Bixie. I had that longer version, and then I had the shorter Pixie version. I think you would look great in a Bixie. Do you have photos from that time? I need to dig them up. Dig I them mean, up. I always had short hair. This is the longest my hair has ever been. And uh, but I love a great short haircut. Uh, yeah, for sure. Well, isn't it a little bit easier to take care of? Yes. Yeah, I think so too. Especially somebody with a lot of hair. I mean, it is. It it it's a lot. Yeah, less blow drying time, right? Yeah. I've been trying to encourage my sister to cut her hair short for a long, long time. She her has hair, she's full, beautiful. curly hair, right? Maybe one day she'll go for the Bixie. The octopus, this one's a little more obscure. So this is sort of a thing. Um, Okay, how, how do I explain this? I don't know. See, so the octopus, think of it as like layered and having little tentacles that come out from the bottom. If you just Google octopus haircut, you will see many different. This is the octopus? This is the octopus. Why don't we just, we're not calling it Beachy Waves anymore. Uh, well, I Because that's basically what it is. I don't know if that's Beachy Waves, though, because doesn't Beachy Waves have a little more of a rear curl? Like, no. Kind of like the Farrah Fawcett Beachy Wave. No. Uh, no? Mm -mm. No, okay. No, because it's PC, cute split curtain bang there. Okay, well. I love this. As the resident hair expert here at Houston Live, Courtney, you would know that. <laughs> but the octopus, though, love the name, and, uh, you know, she looks great with that haircut. I was not sure what we were getting with the octopus haircut, but I think it's fantastic. I think you should try the octopus. I kind of do. I mean, just depending. I've been uh, wearing my more, hair back. That's more of a squid. It's, it's squid. Squid-like? <laughs> Am I Squidward all of a sudden? I love Squidward. When you sit stand like that, I don't know. AJ and I do uh, Squid. Anyway, that's just an in-house game. But anyway, so speaking of makeovers, <laughs> Meerkat Squidward. We play this little game. Anyway, speaking of makeovers, <laughs> are you following? No. <laughs> It's sort of like the red light, green light. Gang? Yeah, it's sort of like red light, green light. Just the two, you and your 10 year old son, play this game at home. <laughs> it's not odd. No wonder you couldn't make the meeting this morning. Sorry, guys, busy with the Meerkat game. Yeah, well, I was here for the meeting. Give me a break. Don't sell me out. I was I'm here kidding. on I'm time. Um, so, speaking of makeovers, we've got this incredible Glam Squad makeover. Maybe you guys caught the headlines a little bit earlier on in the week. But Betty White. The dog, oh. who was rescued by the Houston Humane Society. This dog was found in the freezing temperatures. Of the oh. oh, 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 that's the after. <laughs> Y'all ruined it. 
This is that was her after but that when was, they found her she was not quite she was as quite matted. I mean you couldn't eat her poor look oh, her poor eyes. So the beautiful folks oh over at the Houston gosh. Humane Society named her in honor of the late actress Betty White. The Glam Squad took over. Big reveal everybody. Big reveal. The Glam Squad took over and Betty White got a fantastic look at her. Okay, she's, fantastic she's makeover. And, you know she was adorable beforehand though. Oh. But the yes. matting of the fur can become very problematic for those So people. the Humane Society did post this. They had it just online applications. Folks, the, the application process has closed yeah, for Betty White. She's been adopted by now, right? I, you know, I tried calling. Uh, I was on a little bit of a hold situation, so I never got through. I'm not really sure. It takes a minute to go through all of those applications. Yeah. Hopefully we can figure that out for you, and we would love to, you know, reunite or show people who her new family is. I, I mean, love we love a follow-up here. And I'd love Houston to dox it, too. But listen, if you did put in an application and you did not get a call from the Humane Society to adopt Betty White, there's hundreds of other dogs. So sure. check out their website. But such a cool story. And look, I love her pigtails. She is, she's so cute. You know, I almost went over to the Humane Society a few weeks ago. Brandon was traveling for work. And I texted and I said, you know what? I might, mm -hmm. I told you this story. Mm -hmm. I think I might just go over to the shelter and check it out. And he said, okay, supportive Brandon, sweetheart, right? He's like, okay, that is fantastic if you want to go. Just know you'll be coming home with a dog. What did I tell you? There was a photo that you posted of Brando working from home and there's this giant space between the desk and his feet and the floor and I said I just need a puppy. I know that floor is looking so naked right now without the dog. You need a puppy. So while we sit on that couch you know while you were sleeping is one of my favorite movies of all time shifting gears now a throwback to the 90s. Do yes. you remember that film? I do remember it. Because she lived in Chicago right? Yes. Your homeland. My homeland. So Sandra Bullock also known as Sandy. A lot of us call her Sandy right? The, Sandy the close friends anyway. So get this she's 57 years old. Now that blew my mind. Can you believe it? Blew it. I, I mean, she's phenomenal. She's phenomenal. She's still working. Back in 2018, she did that film she's Bird still Box. Working. 57. I mean, you joke about it, but actresses in Hollywood. No, I know. This There's, is a thing. It you know? is a thing. I mean, some of them, it's like the height of their career when they're 26, 27, and then they turn 30. And their words, not mine, put out to pasture. That's right. how she described herself. If it weren't for Gorgeous. Netflix, she says, Netflix, of course, they hire people of all ages. I mean, there's so much content that you can constantly stream. She said, quote, I'd be out in the cow pasture if it wasn't for Netflix. So she praised Netflix for hiring actors of her age. And I think it's fantastic. It really is. And we have to go and just look at all the nominees um, from this year, last year, all of these streaming shows, Gene Smart. Gene Smart. I know it's not on Netflix, but what I'm saying is these resurge in careers of, of women of certain age making a name and still saying, showing their craft to the world. It's amazing. And even these actors who have had a fair bit of success or a lot of success, it always surprises me to hear them say, you know, you're only as good as your last job. And so you may be on a hit series one day, but then you're hoping that you'll continue getting hired. So Kudos, Gene Smart, Jen Coolidge. I mean, what are you saying? Nothing. No, I think it's great. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. So, good for good for Sandy Bullock, 57 years old. She Look at looks that. amazing, and quite honestly, doesn't even age. I know, right? She's funny. She's such like I like her in all roles: the comedy, the serious. I love it all. I think she spends a lot of time over in Austin, too. Maybe, Sandy, if you're watching, come to Houston Life. She's totally watching. Did you see this meme going around last week, too, about the Golden Girls and how the comparison of the Golden Girls on the left portrayed as women in their 50s versus the And Just Like That cast in their 50s as well? Right, like where we are then and now and how they they look. Look at that and look at Estelle Getty too, who of course played the mother uh, on the show, who played Rose. And she, I believe she was the youngest cast member. That's uh, crazy. I know, I know. But it, it, interesting though, how we portray from decade to decade, women of a certain age. I know, looking good. All nice. right guys, still to come, we've all fallen victim to bad advice. We've taken it, maybe when we shouldn't have. We're gonna share a list of some of the most cringeworthy Okay, for now, though, let's send it on out to Lauren Kelly, who's learning to play the accordion this afternoon. Lauren, okay, how's it going? This is so cool, you guys. I've never actually picked up an accordion, but today, all of these guys right here at the Kima Boardwalk Inn, it's the Houston Accordion Orchestra Retreat happening all week long, leading up to a couple of great, great performances this weekend. A lesson from that famous maestro right there coming up when Houston Life returns.
hilariously bad pieces of advice that we really shouldn't follow. This is a list on Reader's Digest. There's actually 22 of them, and this is quite funny. It's quite the topic in the office today. Uh, we have a few of these for you. One is drive offensively, right? Aren't we supposed you should to drive defensively? defensively. Uh, don't find someone rich. <laughs> Try a new color for your hair. Charge it credit cards, or just simply carpe diem. Oh. Yeah, seize the day, go for it, don't worry. Hold no repercussions there. Hold out for perfection would be the last one. Well, th what do they say? Don't go for perfection, go for excellence. And so the advice there, like if you're holding out for perfection, right. you're like missing out on all of the excellence in the world that's passing you by. Can you think of a time you were given bad advice? Yeah, I remember. Let's go to Daytona for spring break. We're going to take a bus from Chicago to Florida. I know this story. I know and this I story. And I called my mom crying, crying from a payphone at a Motel 4 because it wasn't even a Motel 6. Because the motel was so nasty. It was and you so were disgusting. And I said, please send me a ticket home. I want to go home. And my mom said, have fun. You wanted to go. Your it mom, was horrible. Your mom is tough. <laughs> I think she cried too. But that toughened you up too, though. I mean, your mom is tough and it made you tough. I mean, there's a few more. I just can't share them today. But there was one time I was in a porta potty and somebody tipped it over. <laughs> somebody took some. I did get out before it actually hit the ground, if you can even believe that. My Spider Man skills totally kicked in. What does this have to do with advice? <laughs> I think somebody probably dared somebody to kick it over or something, right? <laughs> Ever tell you about that time I was in a porta potty and someone kicked it over? No, in fact, you didn't. <laughs> I escaped though before it hit the ground. Wow. I leapt out of that thing. I mean, leaping, yes. Leaping Tom. Wow. <laughs> Good job, babe. Well, listen, why don't we uh, get now to our question of the day? We want to hear from you, as always. What's a bad piece of advice you followed? We do have some pretty great responses coming in so far. Mike writes in, good things come to those who wait. Mike, I agree mm -hmm. because procrastination never got nobody nowhere. I never. Nobody, nowhere, nothing. Uh, Mike and she, they wrote, well, I think it's Mike wrote in, you have to have a degree to succeed. Our friends, the dumpling dudes. Yes, and dumpling you know dudes. That's so true. It is, I mean, there are so many people who are wildly successful and, you know, don't have a degree or didn't finish, right? Right, Robert, or don't have a degree with what, you know, maybe they left the degree and started something new. Right, Robert writes in, stop here, the sushi at this gas station oh. is awesome. <laughs> And hopefully there's a CVS nearby. <laughs> <laughs> With a nice bathroom. I know. Okay, well, thank you so much to our viewers for your comments. That was fun. Listen, there's a lot more. There's some really funny ones I was sharing with you. It's so fun. Okay. Head over to the Houston Life Facebook page. Join the conversation there. We're going to share more of your comments a little bit later on in the show. I cannot wait to read some more of those. Well, shifting gears now, it's a portable wind instrument with a keyboard on the right and buttons on the left. That is right. It's the accordion. And if you ever wanted to try your hand at this unique instrument, Lauren Kelly has all the details on how you can do just that. This is a complicated instrument, I think. This is fascinating, you guys. We're here at the Kima Gold Walk-In, and this is a camp slash retreat that's happening all week long, the Houston Accordion Orchestra Retreat, and this world-famous maestro right here is in from Milwaukee, and he's going to be teaching all of these lovely accordionists here all week. This is the dictatorship, I mean the directorship <laughs> of Stas Van Glesby. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Not, not dictator. But not <laughs> dictator, that's right. But you are the director right now. You're conducting yes. These folks. Now, tell us a little bit about this camp. What happens here all week? So this camp is annual camp, like yes. you said. This is our fourth camp. And, and this is your fourth year here, right? Yes, fourth okay. year okay. here. And so basically what it is, we'll get all accordions from all over the United States. Sometimes people come from overseas even. So there's about 36 people here? 36, 37 people, and it's a limit. We, we could have more. Of course. So people come to ha enjoy and learn experience playing in orchestra, and we play phenomenal music. I mean, the sounds are so 
I just, I love the sound of it. I think it's intriguing well, and it's beautiful. Accordion is one of the instruments of overall. It can breathe. Yes. It has bellow. Now, Stas, how long have you been playing this instrument for? I've been playing this instrument since five years old. Since you were five? five oh, years old, wow. Yeah. So you know the ins and outs, you know exactly oh, yeah. how to play, and that's why you've been doing this for so long, Yeah, right? I got education in Russia. Okay. I moved to America in 1992, where I got my master's degree, and I've been trained as a classical musician. Yep. And so by, by being here for so many years now, we, we, we organize this camp, and it's very successful. Now, I don't have any instrument knowledge on anything, and I know that you need two hands to play this. Is there any way that maybe a little bit later on the show, you can break down maybe the beginner's lesson on how I can hold and play an accordion? Absolutely. We'll teach you two notes. Okay. You go home with two me. notes. He has very high hopes for me. Two notes. I really think that we can do that. Instrument is complicated to learn, Absolutely. but once you learn, but listen, not any instrument is easy to play. Right. You know? right. There's some secrets, some tricks, but what's hard about it is bellow. You have to open bellow, like yeah. put air. And, and that's and the key. Open and plus play together. Oh, nice. that's Sounds like good. a. I can't even walk and chew gum at the same time. This might be a challenge for me. <laughs> Two, notes. Two, notes. Two notes and I'll chew gum. All right, we're going to talk about the performance coming up this weekend a little bit later on the show, and I'm going to start getting a feel of how to play the accordion so that when we come back in just a little bit, I'm going to I'm going to try my best. Stas, I'm putting it in your hands. Derek Courtney, back to you guys in the studio for now. Lauren, what we're noticing is the wide age range of people playing the accordion behind Absolutely. you. Absolutely. All ages are here. It's really phenomenal. These guys have just been wowing me since we walked in the door. Yes. Well, it really is mesmerizing. Like you said, walking and chewing gum at the same time. Lauren, you're going to be great. <laughs> Two notes. We believe in you. It can happen. We'll check back <laughs> okay. in in just a little bit. Reminds me of my Polish roots. I love it. Yeah, I know. That lovely sound. Kind of like the polka, right? Absolutely. Very, very nice, Lauren. We'll see you in just a bit. When we come back, the warning signs of a stroke and what you can do to help reduce your risk. And later, we're going to meet a young young boy who is looking to reach his goal of being sworn in by 100 police departments. Learn how you can help him. All that and more when Houston Life returns. Did you know stroke is the nation's fifth leading cause of death? Response time is critical. And today, Dr. Avni Kapadia, neurologist with Memorial Hermann, is joining us to break down the two major types of stroke and the warning signs to look for. Dr. Kapadia, welcome to Houston Life. Thank you. Nice to see you. This is something that maybe makes people uncomfortable. We don't want to have these conversations, but it is so critical to have these conversations in advance. We need to know the signs, what to look for, and also where to go in the event we are seeing some of those signs, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Memorial Hermann has 10 certified stroke centers, four primary, uh, four uh, comprehensive stroke centers, and six primary stroke centers to help take care of all of our Houston population here. And going to the people who are the best, people like yourself, uh, who know what to look for, that really is critical because, I mean, we're not just talking life or death, we're also talking about quality of life after an event like this. Absolutely, absolutely. We want to help ensure that every person that comes in and, and gets treated for a stroke can lead the most meaningful life that they possibly can and the quality of life that they want. Yeah, we want people to stick around for as long as possible, right? Absolutely. So we mentioned at the top here there are two major types of stroke. Yes. Explain what they are and the difference between the two. Absolutely. So an ischemic stroke is when there's a blood clot in the blood vessel that prevents blood and nutrients that the brain needs from getting to the brain. A hemorrhagic stroke, often people call them brain bleeds, is when there's a weak blood vessel that, that bursts open and then there's blood that leaks out into the brain. Okay. Both of them lead to the brain tissue dying off. And are these things, I mean, are there signs that we would notice when either of these scenarios are playing out? Absolutely. There's actually an acronym that's very helpful. It's called BFAST. Okay. Uh, so the B stands for balance. Uh, so you want to check if the person has a loss of coordination or a lack of balance. Uh, e stands for eyes. If there's a change in the patient's vision, uh, such as double vision or blurred vision. And F stands for face. 
face if you ask your loved one or the, the person you're with uh, to smile and seeing if there's a, a facial droop or, or something that's abnormal with their smile. Uh, a stands for your arms, asking the person to raise up their arms and seeing if uh, one arm drifts down faster than the other and is weaker or perhaps even numb. Okay. And then um, S stands for speech. Speech is, uh, you know, are they slurring their speech? Maybe they sound like they might be a little bit drunk all of a sudden. Okay. Or maybe some garbled speech or a word salad. And T stands for time. If you notice these signs or symptoms, it's important to get, call 911 and get your loved one or the person you're with to the hospital immediately. Immediately. And as we can see on the screen right now, if any one of these signs occur, so people don't have to be showing all of these signs, even if one of these symptoms presents itself, that's the time to call 911. Absolutely. Let's talk about um, just how much of a difference that time makes because maybe, I mean, the worst thing that someone could do is like, oh, I'm just going to go take a nap and we'll deal with this later, right? But that could mean the difference, as we said, between life and death, which is a horribly scary thought, or the quality of life impact that someone could experience. Absolutely. So coming into the hospital as soon as possible allows us to give interventions, either medical or surgical interventions, immediately. And so that could mean walking out of the hospital in two days or perhaps going to a rehab facility or a nursing facility or requiring care at home and so as soon as you detect these things we have more options available for patients and given our large network of hospitals we even take patients from hospitals in the surrounding communities that don't have these possibilities they don't have the capabilities or the surgeons or the doctors to take care of these things you know and it just underscores we are so lucky living in the Houston area that we have access to doctors like yourself and I mean really the best medical care in the world dr. Kapadia we mentioned that I mean, it's the fifth leading cause of death in the United States. That is a huge, huge number. In addition to the, the, the symptoms and the signs we should be watching out for, are there things we can prevent, um, we can do to prevent having a stroke or that we can talk to our loved ones about? Absolutely. It's the same things that we caution patients about for heart disease. Healthy diet, uh, exercise, and we're not talking about running for the marathon this weekend, but even a brisk 30-minute walk three times a week can be very meaningful. And we're not asking our Texans to cut out steak completely from their diets, but introducing more chicken or fish or more vegetables into their diets can be very meaningful. Let's say, though, there's someone out there watching and they say, okay, well, I don't really exercise. Maybe I haven't been taking the best care of my heart health. Are there things that a specialist or a doctor could point to in maybe a, an annual physical exam? Are there th concerns that you could bring to your doctor to say, hey, am I at risk of having a stroke? Absolutely. Annual physical examinations are absolutely important. Uh, going to your doctor, they will have set laboratory workups, certain physical examination findings that they'll look at, given your age and your other risk factors like your family history or other medical issues you have to help you prevent having a stroke in the future. Dr. Avni Kapadia, thank you so much for your time. Again, it's such an important conversation to have around the dinner table with your loved ones, and that acronym, Be Fast, is something we will all remember. Thank you so much. All right, thanks again. And Memorial Herman, by the way, is hosting a free online webinar happening Tuesday, January 25th from 6 to 7 p.m. It's a chance to learn more about the latest treatment advances for stroke. You can RSVP by calling 713-222-CARE or visit memorialherman.org slash stroke dash network dash webinar. Now let's send things over to Courtney for a look at what we have coming up. Hey, Courtney. Hey, Derek. Thanks so much. Great information there, by the way. Coming up on Houston Life, we're excited to have JL back in the house. She's making Third Ward proud. There she is. We're chatting with the local author, inspiring a new generation with her young adult novels. Can't wait to catch up with you. We'll see you in just a bit. And we're going to get a check of what's coming up for the news at the top of the hour, including some breaking news for the Texans. Have you heard? If not, tune back in. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you and at 3.30. Yeah, let's get more of your responses to our question of the day. Earlier we asked, what is a bad piece of advice you have followed? <laughs> and you're spilling the beans. Mark writes in, you're only as old as you feel. Nah, I'm just old. He I don't says. know, Mark. I don't know. You Something look young tells to me. me that you like to have a lot of fun. Debbie says that chopping off all my hair after <gasps> a breakup would be liberating. Oh dear. Going through several awkward stages of growing it back was the worst. I mean, that's a big change. It is a huge change. Yeah. Look at her beautiful hair. It is beautiful. Clearly, it's grown back. But even with short hair, Debbie, I bet you'd look great. <laughs> Chris writes in, "Open the bottle with your teeth." Oh yeah. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Please, that's no. that's always good. <laughs> See you always. at the dentist, Chris. Okay, and Michael has the winning comment. Of whoever smelt it, dealt it. What does that mean? 
I don't know. I don't understand. I don't either, Michael. I don't, I, I can't think of any like funny bad pieces of advice that I've gotten over the years, but I have had people tell me in like a professional or social setting like, oh, well, you can't do that. But it always goes back to people tell you that you can't do something because, because they, they can't do it. Yeah. So I'm a fan of, you know, marching to your own drum. Oh, absolutely. You know me. I do know you. Something tells me if we're going to get anybody to spill the beans here, it's Keith. Let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank. Oh, wow. <laughs> you think, what, you yeah. think it's What'd me? What'd you do? Yes. <laughs> so I was like 11 and yeah. my 10 year old cousin, so they had an old car sitting in, in front of their yard and he got a rolled up newspaper and stuck it in the gas tank and said, hey, I just sucked on the, go the, the gas tank, you should do it too. So I walked up and I, oh, okay. <gasps> My lungs almost. Oh blew up. my I mean, word, Keith Garvin. Yes, I, I was 11 though, you know. So is that um, what's wrong with your head? I, I think. I, yes, I think. And you know what? Now I think. I think my cousin was trying to kill me. Now that I think about it. Oh I mean, my come word. on. I just. I had no idea. I, mean, I felt so like. I felt like a vapor. My whole body felt like a vapor. It was horrible. I feel like you make better decisions now at this point in your I'm, life. Though. I'm still scarred though. Now that you bring it up. <laughs> you brought it up. I, I need to talk to somebody. I need to talk to somebody. I think my cousin right, trying to kill me. You brought it up. <laughs> we didn't know about the story until you said it. So. <laughs> My fault. I wouldn't have said it if you didn't ask. <laughs> Until you brought it up, Christine. <laughs> it's always my Whoa. fault. See how this TV marriage works? I can't be the only one. I can't be the only one. Frank, Christine. Not, I never did on. something like that. Okay, not that bad. Okay, not that's not as, I told not you as stupid Keith. as Keith was, but. No. Somebody did say, you should try out for choir. That was not good advice. <laughs> Uh, look, Frank, uh, Frank, you know when people say you can't sing, Derek, sometimes they really mean, you can't sing! <laughs> well, maybe you can now, Frank. Here's your chance. Can you sing the forecast? No. no. <laughs> come on. Go, Raimi. I know. Cloudy, sunny, warm. Yesterday we were singing, the sun will come out tomorrow. The sun will and come out Oh, there we go. Oh, he can dance, though. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and when somebody says you can't dance... <laughs> Believe them. try harder. <laughs> But I can forecast the weather. Yes, you can. There you go. There you go. Yes, and it's a and captain a ship too. Find something to do and do it well, right? Look, low 70s. It's nice and warm, as promised, out there with a lot of sunshine. Look at this guy. This is Tucker. Oh, so cute. I mean. Focus on that for the rest I of the know. afternoon. It's going to be a beautiful dog walk. 70 at 6, 68 at 7. It's going to be a cold overnight, just like this morning was in the 40s and chilly. Tomorrow morning, it's going to be in the 40s and chilly. So don't put the jackets away just yet. In fact, as we get to the weekend, you're really going to need them. Look at this. Highs tomorrow still get to 74, just like today. In fact, if you like today, you're going to like tomorrow. But then Saturday and Sunday, those are the highs. Those are not the lows. Those are the highs. And I know, 48 and 52. And they come with a lot of wind. So so get ready for that. In fact, if you're going to run a long, 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 long way on Sunday, 36, 40, 46, 48 for the Chevron Houston Marathon with winds on Sunday calming down a little bit from Saturday, but still 15 miles an hour and even some gusts to 20. So it's going to be a breezy one. Quick cool down tonight. That sun goes down. It's nice and clear. The air is dry, so it'll cool down quickly. Still a pretty nice evening. Friday's the same as today. And then the weekend, that's where the changes come in. I'll time out that cold front coming up at 4. Okay, we will see you then, Frank. Thank you. A look now at some of the stories we're working on for our newscast at 4 o'clock. Breaking news from the U.S. Supreme Court regarding the Biden administration's vaccine mandate on companies with more than 100 workers. The court deciding that the White House does not have the authority to enforce that rule. So what does that mean for vaccine mandates at work? We will sort it out for you ahead at four. And more breaking news involving the Texans after a lackluster year. The team has fired head coach David Coley. Sports director Randy McAvoy tracking the new development and we'll have an update on what's happening next. And how are those New Year's resolutions? going for you. A lot of folks resolved to fix their finances this year. Investigator Amy Davis takes a look at the five money moves you need to make right now to keep your resolutions on track. And boy, uh, a lot of us need that advice. Yes, we do. Yeah. And in the meantime, we're going to go have a little discussion about life, life choices. Yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah. In case any of our viewers missed Keith's story, just don't, don't try that at home. No, don't no. try it at and home. My cousin's name is Daniel, so if someone <laughs> finds him, I, I need to talk to him. Clearly. <laughs> Glad you're okay, Keith. Thank you. We'll see you for a Let's go talk about it. <laughs>
Well, she went from humble beginnings in the third ward to a New York Times best-selling author with her book, Wings of Ebony. And now former teacher and novelist mom, JL, is back with a new title called Ashes of Gold. She's joining us now to chat about this incredible adventure. JL, it's great to see you. Welcome back. It's so good to see you too. Thanks for having me. Of course, and this is so exciting um, with your second um, novel. Let's talk a little bit about the book. There it is in your hands. This is so great because I feel like YA, right? Young adults. It kind of is that genre that maybe gets left out a little bit. You know, I find that a lot of readers are secretly YA readers, young adult YA readers, and they just don't, you know, tell their friends. I do think that YA has a huge readership. In fact, most of my adult friends are secretly reading YA in their downtime. <laughs> When people think of YA, they think of like a teen book, but re in reality, I think there's so many themes that are relatable to so many people, you know, found family and things like that. It's just a very relatable, I think, age, and it's full of hope and optimism, which I think is just fun to read, especially, you know, these days. Yeah, oh, for sure. We could all use a little more hope and optimism. JL, let's talk a little bit about uh, your growing up life because we mentioned you grew up in Third Ward. And let's talk about your trips to the Houston Public Library with your mom. A lot of us, we have memories of going to the library. And this really shaped not only your childhood, but your career path. No, absolutely. My mom is a huge reader to this day. She's still a, a, a huge reader. And the way that we got those books was getting in the car after school. Or a lot of times we took the bus because if we didn't have a reliable car at the time or if the car had problems, you know, we just we got on the bus. We weren't missing our library dates and we spent hours there. Um, and it was really fun because I would read books there. She would read books with me. Sometimes we'd go into our different sections. Like that's when I knew I was my mom was really starting to trust me a little bit when I could like wander the library aisles by myself, you know, because she knew I wouldn't like do anything bad. And uh, then I could always check out a certain number. And then our, our goal was to read them so that we could return the next week. And um, it really it really formulated my my love of literature and love of reading. And I think that that's just so incredibly important um, for for young people nowadays, especially, but just for everyone. And it all it all started with going to the library because we didn't have a bookstore in our neighborhood that is now changed. There is a a wonderful bookstore in um, Third Ward, actually, and you can get a signed copy of this book from called Kindred Stories. Uh, but when I was growing up, it was it was the Houston Public Library, or we would go to um, the Barnes and Noble near the Medical Center. Those were the closest bookstores, and they were like 20 to 30 minutes away. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you know, I remember having my uh, library card, you know, I would go, and even when I moved to Houston, gosh, 19 years ago, you went and got a library card because you needed to get some books, yeah. you know? And I feel like now with book clubs, even in my kids' schools, there's book clubs now. So, um, but I think for boys, too, trying to get them to the love of reading and not making them read, actually finding a book for these young kids to sit down and turn around and say, I want to read, I want to know what's going on. It helps so much, not only in their development, but their mind, their creativity, their writing. Don't you agree? Completely agree. And I think that's one of the things I love about fiction. You know, this book is um, fantastical. So I got to like make up a language and I got to put in all like a put in a magical island and like you get to make up all of these creative fun things because I think one of the huge appeals of like TikTok and like all of the things that have young people's attention, um, TV shows and stuff like that are are stories that are really exciting. And so if you can like put that excitement in that sort of page turning potential on the pages of a book. I'm very optimistic that the kids can fall in love with it. I've, I've gotten messages from kids all over the world reading Wings of Ebony and Ashes of Gold, um, like literally in countries, in, in languages. I have to translate the messages sometimes because I don't know where, I don't know how to read it. But um, it's just fascinating what a compelling, engaging story can do. It really can make a, a kid fall in love with reading if they're excited, you know? And imagination, stretching the imagination, I think, is so critical. So, of course, we've mentioned Wings of Ebony and Ashes of Gold. Fiction, fantasy, but safe to say, JL, it is based sort of in real life because there's a fictional neighborhood called East Row, which is a, it's based on the Third Ward. 
It is. East Row is fun. It's it's there's so much of my home in East in East Row. Um, and it's it's modeled after my community. I really bring it alive. I wanted to write a story that you could just like step into the pages of the book and feel like you could taste and smell and hear my neighborhood. Um, it's really, really fun. It is very grounded. I do have a lot of readers who prefer contemporary stories because I mean, even when I was a child, I would read magic, but a lot of times it felt a little inaccessible to me. I had a hard time picturing it. So when I set out to make a magical story, I wanted to make sure that it was very accessible. So if if people aren't really familiar with rap magic, I think it's a good book that you can sort of wet your feet in a little bit because like you're saying, it's very grounded in the real world. Places feel familiar and like things that you've seen, especially for Houstonites, because it's very much a Houston. <laughs> it's very much a Houston book. I, There's even a nod to Shipley's Donuts in there. <laughs> oh, even better. I love a little hint there. That is awesome. OK, what is next for you? I have a fun middle grade series coming out in August. It is called A Taste of Magic about Kiana, who learns she's a witch and has to enroll in magic school in the back of her hair salon. Um, it is silly and fun, and it's for younger readers. So, like, ages, you know, 9 to 12. Very excited about that. Okay, and uh, my prediction is some of these books are going to turn into films. JL, we got to leave it there. We are out of time. Thanks so much for stopping by Houston Life. Ashes of Gold is available everywhere. By the way, books are sold. If you'd like to connect with JL, you can always visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. So great catching up, for sure. Now let's check in with Joe, who has an inspiring story about one local boy. Hi, Joe. Hey, guys. That's right. Not only is he fighting cancer, but he's helping us keep everyone safe. Why this young boy is getting sworn in by several law enforcement agencies when Houston Life returns. You don't want to go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Houston Life. A 10 year old is paying honor to the Bells for Abigail movement, an officer that fought courageously through cancer. He's on a mission to get sworn in with 100 law enforcement agencies, and he's doing so with a lot of laughter along the way. Spending just a few minutes with 10 year old Devorje, you'll learn that he's one talented comedian. Why did the banana go to the hospital? Because it was peeling. No, because he was on peeling well. <laughs> <laughs> And while he's laughing on the outside, he's been fighting on the inside, battling brain and spine cancer for almost five years. The positive energy that he's receiving and the love and the communities coming together say, hey, we're here for you, is giving, like I said, that gives you a, a mental and an emotional fuel to hey, you know I'm going to beat this cancer. Helping him beat it are the women and men in blue, serving as Devorje's heroes after inspiring him following their good deeds during Hurricane Harvey. Now he's on a special mission to become an honorary officer for 100 law enforcement agencies. And that mission is pressing ahead after wrapping up yet another swearing-in ceremony. I was overwhelmed. He's right. That's, that's a good word. It was exactly what I, I figured, and I knew that it was going to come from, you know, men and women in uniform in the community, because we can't come together. God darn it, I didn't even bring my joke book. But it's been no joking matter for this young comedian. DeBorge has been through several surgeries, coming back stronger every time. When he, when he recovered, which was pretty quick, it was about 30 minutes, he came out and saying that God told me that I was one of his angels. And I was like, really? And then he started praying. And then he, he sang his song that I didn't know that he knew the whole words to was God, God is awesome. And then he said God is good. And Devorje is really good at making people laugh and feel great. What does the house wear? Mm. Shh, don't nobody say it. It's addressed. <laughs> Each one of those brain surgeries that he, he's gotten, he's actually changed personalities. He's had 11 of those. On that 11th one, that's where his laugh came from. A laugh needed through this difficult time, something Devorje's father is thankful for. He really drives me. God sends his messages through the purest forms, which are children, and he will get his message through. And I hate to say it, whatever message that he put in Devorje's mind and his heart, he's doing it because he's changing the world and he's showing that we, we can come together for one cause, especially in times of like sickness and stuff like that. We can, we can help each other out. That's what we need right now. We need a sense of healing. Which is what this comedian, officer, and cancer warrior is offering right up. It's a banana phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah, that's a laugh that you can fall in love with. To learn how you can help him complete his mission, just head over to the website, HoustonLife.tv. There's a lot more information and a lot of other stories that we've done on him from yesterday. They're going to be doing more stories on him because he's going to be continuing his mission to try and get sworn in by 100 different agencies. He's halfway there, so he's just mm. keep trucking along, and that laugh is just oh, make infectious. Fall in love. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely had a great time with him today. What a blessing to be able to sit down with him and laugh with him and also just to um, hear his dad's perspective as well. Mm -hmm. He's going to get there. He will easily get to all hundred, Joe. Yeah, and you, then you forget about him dealing with what he's dealing with because he just smiles the entire time. Yeah. And he's like, a, he's like a regular kid. He's just having a good time doing what he's doing. And he's a strong officer with his little outfit on. Absolutely. He is. And you can tell that having a positive <laughs> attitude, I feel like that's a huge part of the battle, right? Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. keeping spirits high. Absolutely. Thanks for bringing that to no us. No problem. Joe. All right. What do you say we check in with Lauren Kelly, who is trying her hand at a classic musical instrument this afternoon? Lauren, I know earlier you were a little nervous. How is it going so far? You guys, don't I look like a natural with this accordion right here? I haven't gotten too far in my lesson, but apparently every button that I've touched so far has been the wrong one. Stas is going to continue to show me. We fix the right we're hand, now left hand. We'll we're going to keep fix. Here. Yeah, it's just it. Oh, here. oh, oh, that that one. Okay, that one. No, my, not that one. That my one. debut with the Houston oh. Accordion you Orchestra got it. Retreat. That's with it. Houston Life Retreat. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Long here at the Kima Boardwalk Inn, we are learning how to play the accordion. It's the Houston Accordion Orchestra Retreat all weekend long, leading up to a performance right here this Saturday. I'm going to put all the details for that at HoustonLife.tv. But world famous maestro, this is Stas Vengleski. He is amazing. You've been playing the accordion since you were five years five old. old, and you just love the instrument, and that's why you've stuck with it all these years, right? Yes. So for the most part, the most common sound people hear from the accordion is. Polka, right? Is that one of the most common? Not really. <laughs> I, I swear I'm learning, and I did learn that polka means slow, small, right? A polka, it's a genre of music, it's polka. Okay, it's polka, a genre. Polka, it's a different sport. It's okay. polka, polka, a little bit. Well, yeah. I was listening to them play beautiful sounds of polka, okay, as I was getting my lesson. And so let's show everybody what we've accomplished so far. Basically, this is the bass side bass on your Bass side, yeah, you play accompaniment, this. here's your okay. one note, see? Right there, and then these. Ready? Okay, are you ready for Absolutely, my debut, yeah. everybody? C major chord. Five, six, seven, eight. slash retreat these people are from all over I heard Alaska I heard Virginia I heard California uh, I mean from all over Wh where are my Texas folks at we did have some representatives from Texas in here originally though Stas you're from Milwaukee but born in, in Russia in Russia and is this a common instrument that people in Russia play quite yes, often an accordion actually taken very seriously in Russia it's very, yeah you can get my uh, education and master degree in every major city in Russia well it's a beautiful sound and it truly is fascinating and I originally thought that you couldn't control the volume of an accordion now but you, you learned most the definitely <laughs> can I learned and I also learned that you put your finger here and the, the middle is called what to let it breathe Air it's button. lungs Air it's button. lungs right see ah oh, that's two chords ready one two and now you guys can take us out ready for something nice why don't you kick them off with something so our viewers can end on a really positive note this was really truly fascinating and all the details like I said are online at HoustonLife.tv Stas thank, thank you so much oh, thank you, you very guys much. thank you so much for the fun and the lesson today I've got to keep with the accordion because it truly is very very yeah. beautiful thank you so much thank back to you guys in the studio well done bravo, bravo, bravo. Lauren bravo I love you. it. So good. So it's, it's a good thing she strapped into that thing so she doesn't drop it. I was it. waiting for you to be like, thank you, Houston.
Kevin. <laughs> Good night. You know, best friends, Lori's grandma plays the accordion. Super cool. Mm -hmm. we got to have her on the show. I think it's in the works. Okay. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a country star's live performance. As we head to break, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up tonight on Entertainment Tonight. Hi, Nichelle. Courtney and Derek tonight on ET why Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet are splitting up after 16 years together. Then Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly engage the bizarre way they're celebrating. Plus, from never before told stories to set memories, only we're reuniting the cast of fame as they celebrate their 40th anniversary. You do not want to miss it. That's tonight at 6:30 right here on KPRC2. Now, stay right there. Houston Life will be right back. Tomorrow on Houston Live, critically acclaimed singer-songwriter Joshua Radin stops by our studio for a live performance before his show at the Heights Theater on 19th. Yeah, plus from $1,000 to Landry's gift cards to all kinds of other great prizes. Could you be our next KPRC2 insider to win big on the Houston Live prize wheel? Well, you'll have to tune in to find out. It's Friday, another reason why we love Fridays here at Houston Live, Courtney. We get to spin the wheel once again for one of our insiders to win. What a fun show today. Thanks for being part of it. Yeah, happy Friday Eve. Be safe out there. In the meantime, we're going to hand it off to Keith and Christine in Studio A. Hey there. Oh, I love Hello. Wheel Day. Are you going to wear uh, feathers or sequins tomorrow? Oh, you know He's it. wearing feathers. How about both? Love the sequins. Yeah. Yes, do both. Yes. Combo. Absolutely. Done. Love it. Okay. Happy Friday Eve, you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay.